Delete the default cube. Add a polygon cylinder. Set vertices count to 12. Rotate the object along the Y axis 90 degrees. Apply rotation. This will zero the rotation and reset. Add a loop cut to the middle. Delete the right side or left side of the model. Delete the bottom side. Select all the vertices and flip the normals. Add a mirror modifier. Turn on X and Z axis. Select these vertices and use the extrude tool to extrude them. Set orientation to the global axis. Make sure you have turned on the clipping in the mirror modifier. Extrude these two vertices and move them forward. Add a loop cut and change the number of cuts to 2. Select these vertices and extrude them. While extruding, press X to extrude them along X axis. Now turn on snapping and change the mode to the vertex. Then snap the bottom vertices to the top just like this. Turn off the snapping. Move these vertices. Use the knife tool to draw the edges. After drawing the final edge, press enter. We want the faces with four vertices. Which means we need quads, not triangles and gons. If we have triangles or gons the mesh will have some pinches when subdividing. So keep your mesh with quads as much as possible. So merge these vertices. Add a subdivision modifier. Set the subdivision level to 2. Add a loop cut and drag it. While dragging it turn on the even option by pressing E button. You can see the shortcut key right here. Add another loop cut. Add a loop cut near the edge. Select these faces and duplicate them. Press escape to place the faces in the same place. Now move them along the x-axis. Then separate them. Turn off the x-axis in the mirror modifier. Now select all the faces of the new object and flip them. Select these vertices and extrude them downward. Turn on snapping and snap them to the top vertices along the x-axis if they are not aligned to the top vertices. Select these vertices and make a face. Do the same thing to other side as well. Select these faces and inset them. Turn off the boundary. Add a loop cut. Select these faces and extrude them. Scale them a little bit. Extrude again. Add a loop cut. Change the number of cuts to 3.
Scale down these faces along the Y axis a little bit. Select these faces and inset them. Make sure you have turned off the boundary. Add a loop cut and drag it to the end of the handle. Turn on even when dragging by pressing E. And then turn on flipped by pressing F. Add a loop cut here. Select the blade part and go to the local view. It will be very easy when texturing and unwrapping a particular object. Select these edges and mark seams. Apply the mirror modifier. Select all and unwrap the model. Add new material. Go to texture paint layout. Apply shade smooth. Add a new texture slot. Go to the texture properties. Click on new. Open a metal texture. I got this texture from textures.com. Go to the texture section. Choose stencil. Right click and drag to move the stencil. Paint on the model. Rotate the stencil and paint on the sides. I forgot to save the textures. So let's go back to texture paint and click on save all images. Exit from the local view. Select the handle. Apply shade smooth. Add new material. Go to the local view. In texture paint mode add a new paint slot. Go to texture properties and open a wood texture. I forgot to unwrap the model. Let's go back to edit mode. Select these edges and mark seams. Apply the mirror modifier. Press U to unwrap the model just like we did to the blade part. Paint on the model. Click on Save All Images. After you paint on the model, go to the Object Mode. Go to the Shading Workspace. Connect the texture to the Roughness Channel. Add Color Ramp Node between the connection. Invert the Color Ramp Node by moving the right arrow to the left and the left arrow to right. We have to invert the Color Ramp because in Blender, white represents full roughness while black represents zero roughness. Increase the contrast of the texture a little bit to get some decent roughness. Add a bump node and connect it to the normal channel. Decrease the strength.
Select the blade part. Add a mix shader and a principled BSDF shader. Connect it to the mix shader. Add an image texture. Click on New. Name the new texture as a metal mask. Set metallic to 1 in the second principled BSDF. Add a color ramp node. Connect it to the roughness channel. Invert and increase the contrast just like we did to the handle object. Go to the Texture Paint workspace. In Texture Paint mode, select the Metal Mask texture. Remove past textures from the texture section. Now you can paint. Let's add some variations to the paint. Go to the Texture Properties and create a new cloud texture. This time, choose Tiled as the mapping option. Decrease the strength. Let's change some of the settings of the cloud texture and paint again. Add a bump node to the blade part as well. Decrease the bump strength. Let's darken the black metal texture a little bit. Set blend mode to multiply. Decrease the white color a little bit. Now paint on the model. If you made any mistakes to the model, you can undo and repaint. Make sure you have saved all the images. Change the settings as per your needs. For the blade part, I forgot to change the metallic to 1. So let's fix that. Now you can render the model.